Sorry about that, everyone. I'm back. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Please accept my apologies. I'm normally not this uh, sloppy, but I guess I'm a little bit tech challenged. I just posted a link in the comments where I want you to click and join and create an account. Um, it's a free service. And yes, it is. Uh, it's an affiliate link. So it might send me like $3 if you register. So if you're okay with that, go ahead and click the link. If you if you don't want me to have $3, then I guess don't click the link. But it'll take you to a site called nav.com and you'll be able to create a free account there. But you have to do that in order to follow all the rest of the steps in the video. All right. So again, set my apologies about the technical difficulties. Hopefully you guys got the screenshot and the sound and um, everything else is good and we can keep going. All right. So one second. So somebody let me know if you can hear me and see me before I get started again. Anybody, somebody, there's a little bit of a uh, delay. Okay, can y'all hear me and see me okay? Ashton, anybody? Why is there such a lag on this thing? Okay, Mia, thank you. All right, and then hit the thumbs up too on your way in. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna share my screen again and we're gonna get started, okay? Sorry about that. Somebody said I'm good. All right, cool. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. Give me just a second. Okay. So once you click the link that I just posted in the comments, you'll be able to see a, um, a website that looks like this. It's going to look like, um, it's gonna look like this. That's the, the where the link is going to take you. And again, it is an affiliate link, but it's like $4. So don't trip about that. Um, so this will take you to nav.com. I want you to create an account here. And the cool thing about nav, which um, I just recently found out from talking to them at FinCon, is that they actually walk you through much of the steps that you need to start a business. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. Give me one second. Probably would have been easier to do this as a not on YouTube, but hey, we're gonna go ahead and make this work. So when you set up your account with NAV, the first thing you're gonna see is a screen that looks like this right here. And what you want, I want you to do is go down and click on business launcher inside of that that account. So again, click the link in the in the chat box chat box, I'll post, keep posting it again, but you're gonna go and click on business launcher. And then once you do that, you'll get to a screen um, that looks like this. And it has 13 steps to start the business. Um, and I was talking to a couple of people who actually work in a, a higher up department at NAV, and they're really starting to get focused on um, real estate investors, because that's a, a big part of who is utilizing their services. So again, this is this will help you set up a business for any type of entity that you want. It doesn't have to be specifically real estate, but I did want to make you aware that they are really focused on, on catering to people in, in our industry. So again, you'll see 13, the first step is they will, um, you can pull your personal credit report and you'll get a business credit report. Obviously, if you don't have a business yet, you won't be able to get the business credit report, but you'll get your personal report. And I believe it's from um, TransUnion and that's free. It's a free service they offer. Then you're not gonna get all of them, but you will get the score from TransUnion and you'll get a business credit report eventually once you take all the other steps. All right, that's the first thing. And then it'll say establish a legal entity for your business. And once you click on um, this right here where it says review task or get started, it's gonna take you to a screen that looks like, it's gonna take you to a screen that looks like this. This is for um, Texas. So what you do is you click on the state that you live in. They have all 50 states there, of course, and it's going to take you to basically the Secretary of State's website. Because a lot of people are like, I don't know where to go. I can't find it. You know, this is too hard. I don't know what to do. It literally links you directly there. And then once you get there, you have a couple of different options. You can do a, um, a course in LLC. 
um, which will be certificate of formation for a limited liability company. You can do that. Again, it takes you directly to the paperwork. Or if you scroll down, um, you'll see the option to set up what's called a, a DBA or sole proprietorship. So a few things about that. I have started many sole proprietorships over the years um, just because they're very easy to start. It's usually less than $100. Um, the process is super simple and it's it's affordable for, for most people. Now, some people are of the school of thought that you should never have a sole proprietorship because of you want the businesses to be separate from your, your individual um, identity and you might get sued and blah, 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 blah. And what happens if this happens and, and all these different worst case scenarios. But what I say is that, well, you're just getting started. You don't have any money. So nobody's gonna, <laughs> what is somebody gonna be suing you for? Um, so I, again, I've always started sole proprietorships first and then created um, a different entity after the fact, like once money started coming in, it's up to you. If you live in a state where it's cheap to start an LLC, um, I think Indiana's might be a hundred dollars. Then of course, then just do the LLC. If you live in a state where it's um, 350 or $500 to do an LLC, then maybe you want to consider a sole proprietorship. But again, I ain't no CPA, I ain't no attorney, so don't be quoting me in these internet streets about what I, I'm telling you to do, but those are your options. But again, this website that I just posted the link to takes you directly to um, the Secretary of State for whatever state that you live in, and then you can select your business entity from there. So let's go back and see what the next step is. Mm. Hold on. Oh my God, I got too many screens open. Okay. Somebody said, what if you have a business but you never start a business credit? Then that's fine too. You'll be good there, okay? You'll be good. All right, let me see if I can go back to um, the screen I was on. My God, why do I have so many windows open? Jesus Christ, fix it. <laughs> All right, so this is where we were at. And then, oh, okay, the next step, get your employer identification number, which is basically your tax ID number. So again, NAV links you directly to the website to get your um, tax ID number, which is free. You get it from, the IR, of course, irs.gov. And it's funny because I remember getting kicked out of a group on LinkedIn because there was a guy there and he was selling... Um, the Dunn's number for, so Dunn's and tax ID number was 595. Both of those are free, by the way. And then he was selling the Dunn's number or the tax ID number by itself. You could hire him, he would get it for you. He would get it for you for um, 295. But again, this website here takes you directly to um, irs.gov. And I'm gonna see if I, if I still have this window open um, before I get out of here. So let me see if I can show you exactly what it looks like. Oh, child, I got to get my life together. Okay, there it is. So that website, again, links you directly here. And you just write, go right online, apply for your EIN online. Literally, that's all you have to do. A couple things. If you have a sole proprietorship, um, you can only, if you already have a sole proprietorship with a tax ID number, you won't be able to create another one and get a different tax ID number because you and the business are the same thing. So you can do it once, but you can't do it more than one time. So then that goes back to, okay, maybe we should do an LLC and then you kind of avoid all that altogether. Um, you can only request one EIN per day, but of course you're only gonna need one. And it's a, either you will get your EIN instantly or you'll get it in the mail within a few days. It's really, really, really simple. I can't stress that enough. So again, I'm gonna post the link to that, uh, website that I was on that I want you guys to click on to um, set up a business. Okay, so let me see if I can find my screen on YouTube, which I probably won't be able to. <laughs> oh my God, I got so many things open. You know what, I ain't even gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna assume that everything is going the way it is supposed to. But again, you're gonna go and click on that website for um, the IRS. That's the next step. And then once you do that, you'll go to a screen that looks like Okay, this is where you register, select the state for your business. We already covered that. So again, all the states are there. And um, they also give you an option to a place where you can have them do it for you. Uh, this place is Inc. for free, which is $100. There's also LegalZoom as well, which a lot of people use. It just depends upon your comfort level. But the, the process is, is relatively straightforward. The only thing you may need to consult with someone about is creating your operating agreement if you decide to set up an LLC. Um, and that you probably need, you, you should have an attorney do that. 
Um, I think LegalZoom has basic templates for operating agreements, but it just really depends upon the type of business that you want to establish. Um, I will tell you that a lot of you guys do a lot of different things, <laughs> uh, like wildly different things. And so technically those things should be in separate, under separate businesses. I recently created a, I didn't create it, I hired an attorney to create it, a series, uh, a series LLC. And so basically what that is, is there's a holding company at top at the top, and then there's three separate LLCs underneath that. So one is for property preservation, one is for the taxing properties that I buy, and the third one is for the online coaching and consulting business. So that's what I ended up doing um, earlier this year at the advice of an attorney that I utilized. You may not be obviously at that point just yet because that that is pretty expensive to set up. I think it was about $2,500. Um, plus, I, that didn't include the fees to the state. To the, the state's fees for Texas was $300 per LLC. So $2,500 plus $1,200 is what, $3,700 just to set up those four LLCs. But you ain't got to worry about that just yet. So just pick, um, you know, just do one. And then this will take you through that process. All right, so I'm going to close this one and go to the next screen that you'll see. Um, we just covered that already. Close this one too. Okay, that's the same thing as far as setting up the business, I'm trying to get to the next screen that you guys are going to see once you register on NAV. Got that part done. Okay, we covered that part already too. Okay, um, this is the part about building business credit. I didn't want to talk about this just yet. I want to go back and talk about some more things you'll need to do once you're setting up the business and then. So um, you, of course, will need a to buy a domain name. And there's two sites that you can use. One is SiteGround and one is um, GoDaddy.com. Okay. Um, yeah, one is uh, SiteGround and one is GoDaddy.com. So SiteGround is actually one that came really, really highly recommended. And people were saying that it's better than GoDaddy. GoDaddy trips me out because... <laughs> Um, you register for it, or you buy your domain name, like daniellepierce.com. It's like, oh, great, it's $7.99 today. And then by the time you get to checking out, um, you know, the, it'd be like uh, $85. So that's kind of how GoDaddy kind of makes their money, which I'm not mad at them for doing that. I mean, everybody's got to, you know, got to, to, to hustle or make some money or whatever. But it's just weird to... Um, to see the total go from $8 to $80 or over $100. So be mindful of that when you're buying with GoDaddy, but you do need to buy the domain name. And so you'll do obviously buy the domain name after you make sure that the name that you want for your business is available. All right. So again, GoDaddy or SiteGround, that's um, pretty, uh, pretty cheap to buy those as well, about $10 to $12. All right. So there's that. And then also what you'll want to do is so this is SiteGround. This is what this website looks like. Um, you can uh, buy the domain name here, and then they can also do the hosting, um, which everybody has to pay for the hosting of their website on whatever platform they want to use. You could do GoDaddy, you could do Bluehost, you could do this company. That should cost you about $100 for the entire year. So keep that in mind. So that's SiteGround. All right, so I'm going to close that because I got way too many screens open. Um, this here, let me back up for just a second. If you have a, let's say your business is, because again, we're not talking just real estate here. We're talking like t-shirts, um, makeup, whatever business you want to do. And let's say you're trying to check to see if the name of you that you want to go by on social media is available. This is the website that you do it at. So if you're on, I still have my, <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Let's click on Instagram for a second. Um, and let's say you want to see if, um, what's a good name that, that I can think of? Uh, Diva, Diva Lips or something like that. Uh, if you want to see if the name Diva Lips is available on Instagram, well, now you got to sign in, so I'm not going to do all of that. But you would just type in, you would register, uh, sign in to your Instagram account, and it checks to see if those names are available. And some people, it's important to do that up front because if you're branding yourself and your business, you want to be able to make sure that all the brands are, it's the same name across all social media platforms. Um, sometimes it doesn't always work that way, especially if you pick something really um 
really popular that, you know, like Diva Lips. I see, you know, there's like 7 million accounts that have the word Diva in it on Instagram. Same thing with makeup, same thing with boss, the same thing with girl boss, same, like all of that stuff is, is very, very common. So you'll just check here to see if those uh, social media handles are available. All right. So that's that. We did not talk about the, um, the business plan yet. So if you go back to NAF, um, which again, um, let me post that link again in the comments, one second. Because I know some of you guys might have missed it. Somebody said, go daddy sounded like trick daddy. Oh my God. <laughs> Click that link to, to set up your account with NAV, everybody, please do so. I think it is an affiliate link. Uh, it's like, I'll give you like $4, but if you want me to have $4, click it. If you don't want me to have $4, then you could be a hater. Just go directly to nav.com yourself. But um, if you click the link, it'll take you directly there. Um, but that's where all this, this good stuff is located. Like it's literally inside this platform and it's free. And I've had a NAV account for some years and I never knew all the stuff that it actually did inside of it. So I think it's pretty great. Let's go back to, um, we talked about the tax ID number. We did not cover the Dun & Bradstreet number. Um, Dun & Bradstreet numbers are free. And I'm gonna tell you how they get you. Um, they have all these different products. Um, they have outstanding salespeople who will call you and, and talk to you and, and sell you all these wonderful products over the phone and say, oh, we can help you build your business credit. It's only $1,500, yada, 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 yada. Like that's kind of their, their thing. But um, if you go to Dunn's number here, you can see that, hold on, it's free and then expedited because of course everybody got to make, find a way to make extra money and then update your company info. So if you have a business that you set up already and you have had a tax ID number, your business may already be in this database and you may have a DUNCE number already. So that's why when people start saying that they're charging, but I'm just like, how the hell are you charging for something that probably already exists in the first place? Um, that's if you've done everything correctly. You registered with the Secretary of State, you paid the fees, you've kept the, 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 the business certification uh, active, all that stuff, you probably have a DUNCE number already. But if you don't, I would just go ahead and click on here and play, pay for the, uh, not pay, but sign up, get a set up a DUNCE account and register for a free DUNCE number. This, the importance of the DUNCE number is two things. One, if you ever want to do any business with the government, you will need to have a DUNCE number. And then two, um, it, this is how you build business credit. When you're building business credit, they specifically ask you for your DUNCE number, which is basically like the social security number for your business, okay? So that's the importance of having it. Um, again, working with the government and building business credit. So if you wanna do either of those two things, you need it. And if you don't, give a, don't care about it, any of those two things, then I guess don't worry about it. But why not do something that's, that's free to do? Just be prepared to talk to the salespeople, you know, tell them you're not interested in their other services, tell them you're not interested in, help, in them helping you build business credit because it costs about, they'll start at about $1,500 and they'll drop down to maybe 1200 and then 800 and then I think the lowest quote that I've ever received was 700 but again you don't need to do any of that stuff just yet all right sound good so again like subscribe share hopefully you guys did a did me a favor and invited um you know the 18 to 25 year olds it's because I want to deconstruct the process of actually starting a business and make it seem you know make it easy because it really is um, a lot of this stuff I consider to be foundational but I've discovered over the years that what I consider to be foundational and easy is, is really not for, you know, for a lot of people. And it makes sense because nobody, you don't have a class on setting up a DUNCE number while you're in school. Um, even though we spend so many years in school, we never have that. So um, this is the, another step in the process. So I'm going to close this window now because I got way too much shit open. Uh, I mean, way too much stuff open. That's the case there's any kids on the live stream. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> I'm going to close that. But again, your DUNCE number is free. Um, this website here is also linked again through NAV um, if you're following the 13 steps and one of them is create a business plan. So what they have on this website is um, sample business plans. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on it real quick to um, give you an idea of what you can see through here. Um, let's see. And then they have different categories, automotive, travel, education, clothing, let's do clothing. Okay, well, those links not working. 
So they have step-by-step -step guidance and then you can do business pitches, sample plans, blah, blah, blah. But my point is, you know, a lot of information is on this website and I don't know how much it costs here. Um, but again, you could use this. I wouldn't get too caught up in your business plan, not because I don't think it's important. Um, I like one page business plans and I actually have one. I'll post the link once I find it like back in the, um, in the comment section on YouTube, because it's really, really helpful to just have something that you can get through in a couple of hours, as opposed to giving people a 20 page document with financials and spreadsheets and all these things to fill out. Uh, most people go into business with no business plan at all. So hopefully you don't do that. But the one page plan, even though it's not, you know, 100% ideal, it will help you get started. And once you start checking off smaller goals, you'll find it easier to check off larger goals. Um, it just tricks your brain into thinking that, okay, well, this is easy. So I can keep going as opposed to, oh my God, they want financial statements for the next three years. And I, I don't even know where to begin as opposed to doing that. Does that make sense? So again, this is also linked through nav.com. Please check it out and set up your, um, you know, set up the, at least set up a one page business plan. Um, let's switch over there and talk about let's go to let's talk about website design so this is a website called fiverr f-i-v-e-r-r stop it f-i-v-e-r-r.com and on this website you can find well it used to everything used to start at five dollars but because of inflation and you know this is 2019 everything obviously does not start at five dollars but what you'll do on fiverr is you'll go here and you will find someone to build you a basic four page WordPress website, okay? So after you buy the domain name, after you pay for hosting for the year, which would be about $100, you'll go here and what I did was type in WordPress website design. And the guy that I would recommend is, let's scroll down. I would go with somebody like this because they have 421 five-star reviews they're starting at $95. They're a top rated seller. I will just click there. And then once you do that, you just go and you can pay for the basic package, standard package, or the premium package. Premium package is 10 pages. You don't need 10 pages for a website, so you would, don't even worry about that. Standard package is five pages, and this one has um, is a one-page website. A one-page website is okay. Okay, a one-page website is actually perfect because most people have short-ass attention spans. They can't look at anything for longer than five seconds in the first place. So it's perfectly fine to do that. So I would run here, pay this $95, get this one-page website. You have to tell them what you want on a website. And I know that sounds remedial, but I've had people say, well, how do I know what, how are you going to know what to put on a website? Well, you have to tell them. Okay. And then if you don't know what to do about that, then you just search the internet and you just find, you know, different websites and see what they have on there. And then you just kind of, you don't copy it, but you use that as uh, inspiration to create your own. All right. So again, and he also has 17 orders in the queue. So he got 17 websites that he's building right now. All right. So $95. So you can do this or you could go on Facebook and some of these Facebook groups and social media posts and, and let people charge you, you know, a thousand dollars to do a WordPress website, or you could try to build your own. But I don't, I don't recommend that you build your own because I've seen those and they just look shitty. You know what I mean? Like, and I understand that we're all, you know, you might be working on a budget. I mean, I definitely get that, but you don't want to look as if you're working on a budget. Like when I see the websites where it says, you can still see the Wix stuff at the bottom or the WordPress stuff at the bottom. Like you haven't even paid for an actual real plan. You're using their free plan. Like don't do that. Like there's no need to be that cheap and that basic. When well, you can hire this guy who's located in, where's my man at? Usually they're in India or the Philippines, um, something like that. But either way, I mean, $95, like, are we kidding? Are we not going to build a website for $95, right? I definitely will go here and hire them. And again, this website is fiverr.com. Type in WordPress website, look for people who have hundreds of five-star reviews, people who have great, you know, um, uh, who have comments about being great communicators and who, you know, they look legit. So I hire them and then it takes four days, as you can see here. They'll do one revision and then bam, done deal. Does not get any easier than that. Any questions on this website design? All right, before I close this page out, because again, I got a lot of stuff open. All right. Oh, this is another guy that I found too. He's $95 as well. 
Bam, he has 114 five-star reviews and he has 10 people, 10 websites that he's working on right now. Um, but check out the difference. So the other guy gave you one page for $95. This guy is giving you three, three sections or three pages for $95. So there you have it. I mean, you have a choice between these two and there's there's dozens more. But again, don't go with the people that's like, <laughs> don't go with people who just joined Fiverr today or in the last month and don't go with the folks who um, have no reviews because you're going to get probably a bad, um, <laughs> you're going to have a bad experience. All right. All right. Moving on. Let me close this out. Close this out. I want to show you, um, I got to backtrack a little bit. We, got to, we didn't talk about the address for your business and why that's important. So there's a website, um, hold on, that I really like, which is regis.com. Um, so there's pros and cons to, to doing it, to using uh, regis.com. Regis.com is of course a virtual, a virtual, um, Somebody said, I use Fiverr a great deal. My brother turned me on to them. Okay. So Regis.com has some pros and cons to utilizing it. And I'm going to go through them. So of course, you need an address for your business. Okay. Um, you could use your home address or, you know, if you live in an apartment or a house, you could definitely use that. The downside to doing that, though, is that obviously people will know where you live <laughs> and your business, you know, it, it'll become public information, like your address and everything like that. So that's one way to do it. People use Regis because Regis allows you to use what's called a virtual mailbox. And um, they are very affordable. Like if you live in a, you know, they start anywhere from 25, 30, 35, 45, 50 dollars a month, which is cool. Um, and you can set it up instantly online and you'll have a professional address, you know, at whatever, at some cool downtown building somewhere. I have one in Chicago. Um, for those of you from Chicago and know High Park at um 1525 East 53rd Street for many, many years. And it was $75 a month, probably $100 a month now knowing Chicago. But um, I had that one. They never had any issues there. So they will, your mail comes there, they take your packages. Sometimes they'll, they'll answer the phone and like pretend like they're your, your ad, you have an admin or a secretary. They'll leave, take messages for you. Um, you can reserve the conference room for discounts. I mean, you could do a lot with the, with the virtual mailbox. The downside to Regis.com though, is that, um, hold on, I'm busy looking at myself. Yeah, Apple Science, the video is going to stay up. The downside to read is that some of the websites are flagged for, um, some of the addresses are flagged as being mailbox centers. And so once you put that on your application for your DUNS number or for your, on the Secretary of State, sometimes it gets rejected because they're saying, oh, well, you can't have a, a P.O. box. That's the downside. And a lot of people don't uh, talk about that enough. I actually ran into that issue with my Google listing um, for my business, Women, Wealth, and Real Estate. So I did at one point have a virtual mailbox at this one building in Fort Worth. And then I switched and I got a real office because, let me tell you, <laughs> The office space was $260 a month. I was like, well, sign me up today, boo. I will take that. So um, that's why I ended up getting the, the, the real office spaces as opposed to the virtual mailbox. And again, $269 a month. But that address at that building in Fort Worth um, was flagged. And so when I tried to create the Google business listing initially with that mailbox address, which was suite 300, you know, at the building, it didn't work. So then I had to, pay, when I paid for it, I had suite 340A is what I have now. And then that wasn't an issue. So you do got to be careful about that. And I think the best way to check that is to type in the address that you're thinking about buying into Google and see how many businesses show up at that same address. Because if that happens, I wouldn't use that address. And then, so there's Regis, there's UPS.com. You can do it through the U.S. Postal Service as well. There's lots of different options to create your virtual mailbox. Um, but I'm going to show you... Um, how you do it. So this is Regis, go to virtual office, buy now. It's so easy to do. Like, this is the easiest thing ever. Do you hear me? Ever, 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 ever. Actually, you want the professional address from $37 per month. <laughs> we don't want the other one. Um, and then you choose your options. Let's type it. Let's do 60411. That's the zip code to Chicago Heights. Who the hell is that for? I guess that's because where I'm from. Um, 
so you type in your zip code and these are all the options you guys like these are your business addresses right here um as you can see they vary wildly this is 46 75 46 75 93 i mean and then these are the actual buildings so this is 93 dollars per month in orland park which of course like why is orland park so overrated like come on like it's not even that serious um let's see where the 46 dollar month is on that so forty six dollars a month. That's uh, Westbrook. Okay, that's too far. If you live in Chicago, let's see what most prestigious is. Of course, downtown six twenty North LaSalle, River North. So they want one twelve a month for that. So it literally just depends on what you're looking for. So you could start there, and this is saying it's based on a two year agreement. I wouldn't do a two year agreement. I would do a one year, and if I could, I would ask for six months. But this is how you get your address. And of course, I said, like I said earlier, there's USPS, there's UPS, but check, type in this address and whatever suite number they're telling you to utilize and make sure that 17 businesses don't show up. Because if that happens, um, you're going to have problems registering with the Secretary of State and with getting your DUNS number as well. Sound good? Bam, moving on. I'm not gonna go to the other websites because y'all got browsers and they work pretty well. And again, did I mention I'm not an attorney or a CPA, so don't be trying to sue me for nothing. Um, because yeah, this is just general advice based on my 13 years as an entrepreneur, um, just FYI. <laughs> um, Kimberly says, do you think home offices are okay? They are okay if you're okay with everybody knowing where you live. Um, which, I mean, it's not going to be like everybody like the whole world, but, um, you know, it, 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 it'll, it's public information, okay? When people Google your business address or Google, Google your business, um, it's public information. So just keep that in mind, all right? What else we got to talk about? So I'm running out of time. I got to make sure I cover everything. So we went through that website. Um, hold on. Stay with me, y'all. Okay, and again, this is the website that I want you guys to go to. So if you have not clicked this link, please do so. Set up your account with NAV and that you'll be taken to a screen that looks exactly like this, okay? And again, it is an affiliate link, but um, it's like $4, so who cares, right? Like you should want me to have $4. Um, super chats are okay too, just an FYI, if you feel like you're getting um, good value. So we covered setting up the business. We covered registering the account with, um, with NAV. We talked about registering at GoDaddy or SiteGround to get your domain. We went through the process of verifying, you know, getting your social media handles at namechecker.com. We talked about um, getting the virtual address for your business. I told you where to go to get the, I, the EIN, the tax ID number. We talked about where to go to get your Dun & Bradstreet number. Um, what else do we need to cover? What else do we need to cover? Um, let me see if I missed any questions too. No, the re the video is going to stay up, so don't worry about that. Darnell says you deserve something for this. Thank you, Darnell. I appreciate you. I didn't know the set until just now. Appreciate you. All right. Um, somebody said you have to start in the state that you live in. You do not. That's a good question. You can actually start your business. Uh, you can start it wherever you want. Some people started in in Delaware because it has great tax breaks for for corporations or LLCs. I mean, you could do, uh, do it wherever you want to. Doesn't matter. Okay. All right. I want to talk about a couple more things. Hold on. Oh, business credit. Duh. How did I miss that part of it? So again, in NAV, which I thought was just like super amazing. Now that's the tax ID number. We covered that, so we good there. How about NAV actually tells you where to go to start creating your um, business credit profile and building your pay deck score? These are all the places that you can go for free to, um, to event. It tells you when you should be able to apply. So like when you're just setting up your business, so let's say you do by in the next week, you have your LLC done. You have the address, you have the certificate of formation, you, you got tax ID number, you're waiting on your DUNS number because sometimes the DUNS people, they'll send you a number 
in a week and sometimes they'll say, you know, it'll take four to six weeks, whatever. Just let them, you know, let them play their little games or whatever, but they will eventually send it to you. Once you do that, then uh, NAV tells you, okay, start with these companies to create your, um, your credit profile for your business to start building your paydex score. Your paydex score is basically like your credit score for your business. It goes up to 100. You want The goal is to get it above 80. Okay. Once you start getting above 80, you can pretty much get any type of business credit that you want. But they tell you you have to start with these accounts. So Uline is one. Granger is another one. I do love Quill.com. Um, and then this company and then Global Industrial. So what you'll find is um, Uline sells like commercial cleaning equipment. So you're like, what the hell am I going to buy some stuff from here for it's not about what you buy. It's about buying it, setting up what's called a net 30 account, which this soft, this system walks you through that, setting up what's called a net 30 account. And then, then you buying something, you pay for it, and they report it to your business credit report. So there's business credit reports from Experian. Uh, there's a Dunn's one, TransUnion. Like everybody has a product or, so, that they, or service rather that they um, are trying to get people to buy into, um, which is fine. But this is what the purpose of buying from them is. But I do like Quill.com because Quill.com is basically uh, is like Office Depot. I'm going to go there real quick for those of you who are not familiar with it and show you what it looks like. Because I kind of buy, uh, I got some cool stuff. Uh, printers from there. They're really, really cheap. Um, office chairs, desks. Hold on one second. I type in printer. Let's see what shows up. So you can get a really nice printer from here. Um, this is 269, but I mean, we're not gonna pay 269 for a printer, right? Well, let's do my favorite search, which is from low to high. <laughs> um, don't get this cheap ass printer neither. So you, I would say you can get a really cool, like functioning um, fax scan copier for like 60, $70. You should pay about that amount right here, okay? Um, like this one right here is $50 right now. Like I would definitely get that, um, the HP one. So this is, so you buy, you, you do all the other steps and you can see I have an account here as well. It says, welcome, Danielle. Um, set up your business, set up your, your dons and all the other stuff that we talk about. And then when you're ready to start building business credit, you're going to create your first account here on cool.com, buy something, they'll invoice you, you pay it back, and that'll be your first thing reported on your business credit report. And if you do this, you should have this done within the next 30 days. And in the next 45 days, you should have some type of um, activity on that profile, which you'll be able to, again, check on the NAV dashboard, okay? And I'm saying NAV is in uh, N-A-V is the name of the website. I'm going to post the link again, all right? So this is how you do that. So going back to the other um, business credit options, which that is not it. This is what I was looking for. So once you have these accounts and you bought a couple things, paid it off on time, then they're saying, okay, cool. Once you've done that, then pick three to five from this next list, which is Dell, Lowe's, Shell, Kinko's, Staples, Chevron, Home Depot, UPS, Conoco, and Office Depot. Okay. So it literally tells you exactly what to do. Let me tell you something. If you can't follow this, if you think this is too much work, then you definitely need to just stay working the job. Okay, because build entrepreneurship is not your is not your not your thing. And I'm laughing, but I, I'm completely serious. Like, if you think this is hard, I can't even figure out how you're gonna uh, like run an actual business because it's you know obviously much more work than this. This is foundational, basic stuff that we all have to know. We all have to learn and teach other people, and especially teach the um you know the people who are coming up behind us, people in high school, in college. I just met a girl um here at this conference who is. 22. And she was like, I don't know what to do. I just got my degree. I'm looking for a job. And um, she has a bachelor's in business administration. I'm like, well, why the hell don't you have a job yet? Like you should have a job before you graduate. But that just shows how much the market has changed. Like I had my job when I graduated a year and a half. I had my job a year and a half before I walked across the stage. I got the offer and they waited. But I guess now that's not even a thing anymore. Maybe it depends on the school that you go to. Like I did go to Utah and Champagne, but she's looking for a job still she just graduated so it's like you just spent all this money on these loans you have all this debt and you're still you don't even have a job yet 
So I'm about to put her on to teaching English overseas to, of course, doing payment inspections. But I think that's a great way to travel and see the, see the country and see the world and, and get paid for it. And also being um, an insurance adjuster as well, because she has the flexibility to do that. She don't have a man, she don't have no kids. And I feel like it's prime time. Like this is go time for you. You understand what I'm saying? So um, that was just my little side note about, I get excited when I talk to people who are like just starting out because I feel like if I had known all this when I was like 18, then obviously things will look, um, there's a lot more progress that would have been made by now. All right, so I'm gonna close that, get off my soapbox again. <laughs> uh, we talked about that already. Hold on, make sure I didn't miss anything. That's the Dunn's number. Don't let them uh, trick you into paying nothing for your Dunn's number. Uh, covered that already. I think that's all the slides that we needed to cover. Yeah, otherwise I'm getting into my tax lien stuff. And I didn't, we don't need to talk about that today. That's another time, another place. So I'm doing this because my goal is to get people to in a position where they can actually buy tax lien properties and do property preservation and, and do other things besides, um, you know, work a job somewhere, right? Work a job. Deborah says, insurance adjuster, do tell me more. <laughs> we'll talk about that another time, all right? So again, let me post the link again to NAV because I definitely want you guys to create an account there. Do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button, um, like, subscribe, share the video if you have not already. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. I mean, ain't nothing gonna happen when I get there, but I just think it's a nice even round number to get to. So I'm just, that's the goal that I'm looking for. Um, let me go to, okay, that was cool.com. Another website, I want to show you. I wanna mistakenly close out the YouTube video because that would be tragic. I'd have to start all over again. I don't have time for that. If you have a, so business credit is, obviously works different than personal credit. And so it's much easier to do it and you can do it much faster if your personal credit score is, you know, 680 or above or 700 or above. It's, a, it's pretty much a walk in the park to do it that way because basically all you're doing is personal guaranteeing everything because your score is high enough where they're not really going to trip about giving you business credit because you've managed to handle your personal credit. If your credit score is not that good, and of course you want to work on building your personal credit score, you can still build your business credit. It's just going to take you longer. So you're not going to be able to go and apply, for example, this um, Capital One Spark Visa credit card. They are really, really good small business cards. Um, if you have a 600, you can get one with about a $5,000 um, credit line. And the cool thing about it, well, depending upon how what you consider cool. If after the first like six months, they'll bump you up to like 7,000. And then after a year, you'll be at like $9,000, $10,000. Um, and again, this is with a 600 credit score. You can do a Capital One Small Business Visa credit card. And they have a bunch of them. They have a green one. They have a blue one. Um, hold on, let me scroll down and see. Yeah, so these are the, the different options. And as you can see, excellent credit. Okay, you got these options. If you don't got excellent credit, let's keep scrolling down. <laughs> You'll get this one. And this is for average credit. And again, that's a 600. So they only give you 1% back. And obviously you don't get all the other cool things. And you see the interest rate is high as hell, 25%. Um, that's, that's, that's crazy. You can get multiple cards from multiple people in your business. So if you're working with your husband or your wife, you can get them a card. You can get your employees a card or your subcontractors a card. I mean, you could do a lot with these things, but again, Personal credit is always going to play a factor. Anybody who tells you that your personal credit score doesn't matter for business credit is just um, either they are rookie or they're just lying to you. I'm not sure which one it is um, because it, it does matter. It does matter. Not to say, so it's not impossible if your personal credit score is bad. It's just harder, just like anything else, right? Every good credit makes life easier. We live in America. I think everybody can agree on that. Okay, so this one, as you can see, the interest rate is from 15 to 23%, and this one is flat out 25%. That's, that's really, really hot. So if you are in the situation and you do get this card, uh, this ain't the card you want to max out and play around with. Because if you owe $1,000 um, and you pay back their, following their payment schedule, you're going to pay back um, $1,250. If you owe $4,000, you're going to pay back $5,000. Crazy. You want to be on the receiving in a 25%, like, you know, at a 
tax deed or a tax lien sale, like in Texas, their interest rate is 25%. But for this credit card, like you got to be really, really careful. All right. So get it if you have to now, but please don't, this ain't the card to play around with because <laughs> that interest rate is high as I don't know what, right? Okay. So let me see if there's anything else that I, um, that I missed. I'm gonna go back through the comments. Um, Brother Lubin says, I was told that credit karma is crap and then my FICO score could be lower than what it's showing. This is true. Credit karma is not your, your actual credit score. So there's probably, there's dozens of versions of your FICO score. There's one for auto, one for loans, one for, um, for, one for auto, personal loans, um, mortgage loans. There's a bunch of different versions of your score. Um, so credit karma is not going to be the best indicator of, of your credit score. No, it's not. So you got to actually pull your FICO score for that. And your FICO score now, shit, the FICO score costs $65 to get your report, to get access to your three scores and three reports one time. And then it's good for 30 days. And then after that, you got to pay another $65. So it's expensive. But if, you know, you pay your stuff on time and you keep your credit um, cards not maxed out, like I keep them at about 10% of your balance, um, or 10% of your, the maximum amount that you can charge, you'll be good. Okay. So there's that. Somebody said they had their credit karma, their score come out higher on credit karma. Yeah, it's, it varies. All right. Let's see what else. Um, somebody said, I thought the card also reports to your personal credit. Yeah, the Capital One does. That's why I said people say that personal credit doesn't matter. I mean, it is lying to you. Like it reports to your business and your personal credit report. So that's for Capital One, but some of them will report to your business. And if you're late <laughs> and you start, you know, messing up, then they report to your personal credit report. So that's how they do. Like, it's just, it's all a game. You understand? It's all a game. It's all a matter of strategizing and, and knowing how to navigate within the system that we all live in. That's pretty much it. Somebody said, can I use business credit to purchase tax lanes? Of course you can, if you have a card. So the way that will work is you will either get a, you'll get a cash advance off the card. And then once it's time to, to pay for whatever liens or properties that you want, then that's how you would pay for it. Okay. So you don't actually swipe a credit card, but you do um, get an advance. Hey, Regina from Boston. What's going on? You guys did me a favor, like the video, because I see a lot of people are watching, but not, you know, not as many likes. That only just helps the video get out to more people. Um, I call this my give back just because Again, I consider a lot of it to be basic stuff and um, a lot of people don't know. So I want you to know. I want you to at least know how to start a business. Once you get this down, you're going to be like, well, this shit is, is super easy. So let me keep doing it over and over and over again, right? Um, if you have someone, a, a child or a niece or a nephew, I would recommend going through the process with them and doing it for them. Um, all my children, I bought all their domain names, their first and last name, just because I don't know what they're going to do, but whatever they're going to do. <laughs> Uh, SerenaPierce.com, MichaelaPierce.com, that's already taken. I've reserved it a couple of years ago. So I recommend doing that for your children um, just because it's important to, to lead by example versus just, um, you know, just, just, just talking. Because they always, it's like living under a microscope. They're always watching what you do and they're learn, they learn by what, by what you do. So my kids now, they talk about, oh, I'm going to own my business and uh, I ain't going to hire you to work for me talking to their siblings, but they, I like the idea that they're thinking about owning a business versus working a job because I never had that thought until I was 27 years old. And then some of us don't even have that thought until 47 or 57 or 30. So, so it just varies. So if you can't do these steps, my friends, um, then entrepreneurship probably is not the best choice for you. And that's cool because everybody can be entrepreneurs. But I'll tell you that more of us, we were more successful when most of us were entrepreneurs. I will say that. And these are just facts. So I'm not just telling you what I heard. It's a mom and Sam telling you what I know. We were more successful when we were business owners as opposed to working a job. Um, I met a guy here at the conference and he told me, I'm not going to tell you the whole story. But basically he said that he's 64. He said that it was understood. He was taught this by his father and grandfather that you had a job for your bills and a side hustle to have a good quality of life. Um, and I'm just like, where the hell did this mentality get lost at? Like, oh my God. Um, and he just, that's just what he thought. So he was, a, he was a, a veteran. He retired from the post office and he was a plumber, electrician and an HVAC technician. Um, all because he just felt like 
he believed that you should have a side hustle to bring in money to help your family be comfortable as opposed to just existing. So man, shout out to that brother right there. Um, fake Rich and Tire, thank you. I appreciate that. It's, thank you so much. I, I appreciate you guys. Anyone who's on the Super Chats, if I have not called you out, it's because I haven't seen it yet. So um, I do appreciate that. Somebody said, well, should we build credit for multiple LLCs? Why not? You should. That's what I'm doing. You should do that. Let's see if you have any other questions. Uh, keep going. Keep going. Somebody says, Chantel says, when doing cash advance on cards as high as the, with the high interest rate, shouldn't you have an absolute and immediate execution plan? You should. If you're borrowing money at 25%, you absolutely should have a plan because if you don't, um, you're going to be, you'll quickly find out that that wasn't the best idea. So that kind of goes back to whether or not you should make moves when your credit score is not that good. Because obviously, if you have a 25% rate, it means your credit score is bad. So you could wait to build your personal credit score if that makes you more comfortable. And if you're more of a risk taker and you are a great executor and you can get things done, then you would do it with the, with the higher interest rate. But yeah, you need a definite plan. Otherwise, I mean, that is a disaster. All right. And somebody said, do you think a candle company is profitable? Um, I mean, any business can be profitable. Last thing I'll say about the business thing, because I got to go back downstairs and I got to check out and I got to drive back to Fort Worth and all this other stuff. Um, it does not matter how many people have the business that you have. <laughs> I mean, it's so, I, I, I can't stress that enough. It does not matter how many people are doing what you're doing. Most people are half-assed in everything that they do anyway. It's like every industry 80% of the people, I mean, 20% of the people make most of the 80% of the money. That's true about real estate. It's true about property preservation. It's true about tax things. It's true about, um, you know, restaurants. Like there's only a small percentage that are actually executing at a high enough level to stay consistent and to keep building and growing their business. So if you are someone who can get things done and you have a plan, and more importantly, if you're talking about things like candles and t-shirts and, and things like that, building a movement around your product, then you'll win. If you don't have a movement, it's going to be hard to sell candles because people are going to be like, well, why am I going to buy this $25 candle from you when I could just go to Bed Bath & Beyond or whatever the stores are and buy one there or Target, whatever the case may be. You have to build a movement around what you're doing. Does that make sense? So create momentum, you know, talk, build a tribe. That's what sells products. And then once they have that no like and trust factor and they feel like you give good information or you help them out, then they spend their money. But just because you created a candle company, nobody gives a shit about your candle company. I'm not speaking to you specifically, but just in general, like nobody cares about your t-shirt business, your candle company. Nobody cares about any of that. So people care because you have to give them a reason to care. People are selfish, um, unmotivated, low attention span. A lot of us are lazy, you know, myself included. And so you have to give people a reason to care about what you're doing. So you have to make the, you gotta be so good they can't ignore you. Do you hear me? Like be so fly and so bomb and so dope that they can't look away and be consistent. Like don't be switching up your thing that you do every six, you know, every three weeks. Like stay, if your thing is candles, girl, or I'm saying, I don't know if it was a guy or a girl, but okay, then you better make sure you make the best candles with the coolest names and the trendiest names. Um, you capitalize on social media, you capitalize on, on reality shows or what's happening in the news, like make that sure thing and be consistent and don't switch over to doing travel um, in two weeks. Cause then people are going to be like, okay, well clearly, you know, you're not about that candle life. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, business phone. Um, I use grasshopper. Uh, I like grasshopper. But e even before Grasshopper, you can do a Google Voice number. Um, some people don't like Google Voice numbers, but you could do a lot with that Google Voice number until you feel comfortable paying for a number with Grasshopper or Ring Central. They're still cheap, but the, the thing with starting this business thing is that a lot of the stuff is cheap, but it's like 10 different things that's $20 a month. So shit, now that's $200 a month, right? So if you can avoid, if you can go with uh, the Google Voice number, do that. You can get that Google Voice number to ring to whatever number you want. You can have it go straight to voicemail. You can take, receive text messages and text other people. Like you can do everything you can do with Grasshopper, to be honest. So do the Google Voice number for that. Valencia talk, is asking about virtual addresses. You got to go back and watch the beginning because we, talk, we, caught, we covered that already. All right. Um, have a good day from Brooklyn. Uh, you said you got to go. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe and uh, turn your notifications on. Like the video if you have not already.
All right. All right, let's see. Let me see. Somebody said they started with the Capital One Spark Go. Shout out to you. Good job on doing that. Uh, okay. All right, so I think that's all I got for you guys. Go back, watch everything. Most importantly, come back and comment your progress. Please don't go and do businesses and start getting credit and all this stuff and you don't come back and say nothing because nothing is, I mean, it's cool if you do, but I'd appreciate if you come back and report your progress because other people can be inspired by it and, and take the same steps that you did. But if you're serious, by next week, Sunday, like you should have the business done. Like it's, it's literally that easy and that simple and that straightforward. And by next month, you should have your first vendor account for your um, business, all right? So one more time for the link to click, please click the link and use it um, to create your account with NAV because all the other stuff we talked about runs through that website. Um, it is a free account. When you're ready to upgrade, they do have a paid account, which I think is 30 or $40 per month. Um, but NAV is, I mean, it's, it's a pretty good website, okay? So I really, really like it. Thank you for watching. Sending you love, light, peace, blessings, grace, and clarity. Until next time, and um, I'll be back uh, next week. All right, y'all have a good Sunday. Talk to you soon. Bye.